On March 18th, go check out our guest appearance on the podcast Less Than 2000 on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Eric and I joined them to talk about Transformers the Movie 1986. Go subscribe to Less Than 2000 on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. Go to greenlitpodcasts.com to find out about all the great shows on the network. Also, Eric, you can meet us at patreon.com. Meet me there. Meet me outside. Meet me somewhere. Patreon.com slash retroream. Go there. Get early access, bonus episodes, mini series, and more. Eric, would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? I would, Chris. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs, chapter by chapter, beat by beat. In this series, we are covering Chrono Cross. Tonight, our unholy swords flow with strength and vigor as our souls are sucked away by the future that refuse to die. It is 2020 AD. My name is Chris. I'm also joined tonight by Eric. Hey, Eric. Chris, it's probably 2021 when this podcast releases. No way, dude. You idiot. You incredible Oh, it's fool. November. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, we are also joined tonight by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join the conversation at patreon.com slash retroam. We are also joined by The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion who went to Comic-Con and dresses the Pope playing Battle Arena Toshinden for three years. Initializing Fake Net. It was an elaborate costume, one that highlighted John Paul II's more attractive features and reduced the size of his tongue. I fooled the National Enquirer into thinking it was actually him playing Battle Arena Toshinden as Sophia. Okay, not a bad game. I have played it recently. It holds up in the same way that a PlayStation 1 game holds up. When the hell did you play Battle Arena Toshinden? PlayStation Classic. Oh, yeah, it was default on that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for a few minutes. Duke Stage had good music, dude. Yeah. Playing right now. Fuck you. It has swords. Yes. Okay, so... It had sidestepping before Virtua Fighter. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, of course it did. So... We're on to the new chapter, but the chapter title doesn't change yet in the game because it's a minor spoiler or a major spoiler, depending on your history with the Chrono series or the, the previous Chrono game. So we're, we'll do that in a second. But we now have a key item. It's called the Fiddler Crab. Eric, what's a Fiddler Crab? It's a crab. Thanks. Fake Net, what's a Fiddler Crab? Initializing Fake Net. I explained this in the previous episode, but since neither of you nutters were listening... It is a beautiful sculpture with a claw that shines like a blue jewel and it's used to access the Dead Sea. Thanks. So we've got to take this thing to the Dead Sea where the tides are different or something of that nature and use it on the world map in your key item inventory, correct? Mm-hmm. And you use that and the screen shakes and like what, what happens? Like water f- flushes everywhere? The entire screen turns a shade of navy blue. It starts shaking, then water pours out of the spinning cloud over some rocks on the south end. The rocks vanish, revealing a cave-like entrance to the Dead Sea. But the process here, when... You're given a fiddler crab to do this. Have you ever, has somebody ever assumed you know how to do something then hands you a tool to do it and you're like, <laughs> whoa, yeah. whoa, is this an Allen wrench? I don't know what that's for. Yeah. My <laughs> my, my dad once gave me like a, a shit ton of tools because he upgraded all of his tools. And nice. I was like, I don't know what any of these do, dad. I know. I mean, I, hammer, screwdriver. Okay. Everything else. I don't mm. know what the fuck this is, man. Yeah. We got an expensive knife block with all kinds of knives in it. Yeah. One's got like two edges and I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. that? What am I just gonna, Give me the big one. I don't know what to do. So, yeah. So the world map now identifies this place as Death's Door. Yes, Death's Door. You go to Death's Door. Chris, there's no music here. It's just the noises of waves and wind. Yes, there's a faint water dripping as well. Yeah. And I feel like there's a faint hum, too, of like something magical, like a radiator or something. Yeah. Uh, A magical radiator in the background. Somebody left their hair dryer plugged in. Kind of what this is. It's a green cave that is somehow very well lit. Yes. A record of fate is in the corner. As we walk forward, the green floral patterns of the cave grow more colorful, evolving into deep blue and at the center, around a sword and the floor in pink-purple hues. The sword itself is rusted the hell out. What happens when we approach the sword? Well, did you, did you have Radius with you, by the way? Yes. Okay, so I'm assuming he pops in if you don't have him. But you approach this evil-looking sword. It's, what, it's a red sword with, like, two extra little kind of blades. Hilt things. Hilt things, not notching off the side. It starts humming. Yes. And 
Radius approaches and says something that blew my fucking face off when I was a teenager when I first pl- played this game. Yeah. He says, what is this? The evil sword? Masamune doing here? And are, are we going with Masamune, by the way, as our, as our pronunciation? Masamune. Ma- Masam- Masamune. Masamune. Masamune? Mas- Fake that. How do you say it? Masamune. Well, th- that's, well, that's not- how I'm saying it, Chris. I'm going to say Masamune. Okay. Old fake net. Still on standby. How do you say it? Masamune. I'm going to say Masamune. All right, fine. I used to say Masamune, but I'm going to say Masamune because the name comes from a 13th century Japanese swordsmith. Japanese fake net. How do you say it? <laughs> so I'm going to enunciate the final syllable is why I'm doing that. So that's the best I can do. But this comment blew my head off when I was a kid because... Of course, that is a very popular and famous sword that we'll talk about a little bit later from Chrono Trigger. And it's not an evil sword, Eric. Well, Chris. It wasn't an evil sword. It was a good sword. It was a, it was a holy sword of light that could slay Magus. Mm-hmm. At this point, I probably forgot what that was. And to me, that's Sephiroth's sword, Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, that's The evil true. sword. Yeah. We'll, the long sword. Yeah. We'll talk a bit more about that later. I've got some good Masamune facts for us coming up. All right. Uh, so Radius approaches this and an evil force knocks him back somehow. Yeah, it's like, it's a sound effect as he kneels and it surrounds it in fine peak energy. Yes. The space around the sword starts to distort as it pulses energy waves. Mm -hmm. Radius says it's no use. We will not be able to proceed without going mad. Yes. Quote, Surge, we have no choice but to withdraw for now. Yes. You know what? Bravo video game for making me open this, like, catastrophe zone and then go in and then it's like, no, you can't come here. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. No good. It's no good. Radius knows that, quote, he must be in there. He says, quote, the negative sentiment associated with that sword has intensified. In implying here that, like, the good, the goodness that was in this sword previously in, in the previous game is gone. Somebody evil must have must so, have taken it. When Radius says he must already be in there, does he mean beyond the sword or in the sword? I think in the sword. Cool. Yeah, because, I mean, we're, we do stuff like that in this video game. Yeah. Norris, who I have with me, asks Radius what he knows about the sword, and Radius just hits him with five dots. Nice. He's not talking. He's not doing it. No, I'm out of missiles. Radius then says that the only the dragon sword, the Einlanzer, can break the seal of the Masamune. Yes, that's very convenient lore. Yes, it is very convenient. Also, it's curious. I guess Norris is well read, but can you imagine if this was, uh, I don't know, draggy or something? Well, for me, it was Starkey, so. Uh, oh, okay, so then continue. Starkey asks about the sword, providing Radius the opportunity to talk about the sword. Oh, okay. Well, so Nor- Norris gives a little bit extra. Hmm. Well, Norris knows that the Einlander is a sword forged by ancient Dragonians. And then Radius confirms that it was forged by the Dragonites, which is a Pokemon. Yes, of course. Yes. Um, and then, uh, so I guess maybe Norris has some additional flavor here, as opposed to Starkey, who I kind of wish that Starkey <laughs> just knew <laughs> that, right? that like, it was forged by the... Uh, Starkey has downloaded the entire Wikipedia for this planet. Yes. So Radius says that he has placed the sword the Einlander, beside its rightful owner, Garai. Which I guess means that that sword that we saw in Termina is not a real one. It's just a, 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 a marker. Cause was, we saw that in, was that in both Terminas? Yeah, it was in both, I think. The, at least there was a grave or a memorial there of some, of some sort. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, its rightful owner is Garai. Garai is who we know as the father of Glenn and Dario and a former leader of the Acacia Dragoons. He is apparently buried at the Isle of the Damned, which is a location that we have only visited in the other world to specifically get a piece of skelly, skelly parts. But that's pretty metal, right? Where, yes. Where's your best friend buried? Yes. The Isle of the Damned. He says that it used to be an ordinary cavern until it mutated into a nesting ground for demons, possibly due to Garai's lingering sentiments. Not even the Holy Sword could restrain it. It would pain him to disturb his eternal sleep, but they have no other choice, Chris. Yes, of course. And Radius says that we have to go back to his hut where he and Garai used to train to get some sort of memento in order to go get the, the Einlander at the Isle of the Damned. So the way that Radius is speaking about this and how he's not being forthcoming with details makes me think this is a grand conspiracy. It is a grand conspiracy, but actually it's just guilt, as yeah, I think we'll find out. Sure. But what is the grand conspiracy that you, that you perceive here? Or are you just the aware hands? of the present that there is one? Well, yeah, just aware that there is one because of Radius's... Respi- like replying with dots and knowing intimate details about yes. something and that the fact that there aren't many connections left unconnected in this game. Yes. So, Eric, before we go do that, the chapter title is changing. The chapter is called The Masamune. Oh, okay. Is the subtitle The Bloodstained Sword of Evil, The Evil Lies Within, or 
Frog, Broken Swords. The Evil Lies Within, uh, Evil Within is a weird game that I respect. Never played the sequel. Finished the first one. Don't play it. What was the last one? Frog, what frog have you broken done? Swords. <laughs> frog, frog Broken Swords. It's not Frog Broken Swords. <laughs> So it's the first one that I forgot. What, uh, what the Bloodstained Sword of Evil? Yes, the Bloodstained Curse of the Night Sword of Evil. Yeah, that was a ding noise. Ding, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that, that was a layup there for you, Eric. I just, I felt bad. Okay, Eric, so now we're on to go do some more stuff, but first we have to talk about the Masamune. Sephiroth. I have tons of Masamune facts and a Masamune quiz show for us to play. Okay, cool. Uh, patrons and non-patrons can hear this, so. You want to hear me ask Chris 500 questions about perfect works? Get our Perfect Works miniseries yes. at patreon.com. Yes, if you like, if you like that kind Literally of Literally 500. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the Masamune in the Japanese version of these games is not called the Masamune, mm-hmm. strangely enough, even though it's a Japanese word. Is the name consistent across games? Like, are they yes. referring to the same sword? Okay. Yes, it is consistent across games. The, the Masamune in lore and in most other games is, is a katana, whereas this is like a, just a, a straight up broadsword type thing. But it is called the Grand Leon. Grand that's a, that's a Leon, cool yeah. yeah, it's way better because yeah. it, it has more of a of a sort of knightly chivalrous flair to it than the Masamune because mm-hmm. that's kind of how we would come to know about the sword is through through the experience of Frog and Cyrus and all that kind of stuff. So you're saying if in Resident Evil Nine, when Leon gets the sword weapon, he's now called Grand Leon because he's also old now. Yes, he is the true wielder of the sword. Apparently, that's what I thought. <laughs> you say Resident Evil Nine. Well, he's not going to be an aide, right? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so let's talk about the sword itself. It was crafted from a material called the Dreamstone. Hell yeah. An extinct material. It was originally made by one of the sages of the Zeal era, the one that you cannot pronounce very well. Go you, for you're it. You're espousing Chrono Trigger lore right yes, now, right? Yes, yes, go for it. Uh, Maga should die. No, no, he's, he's also in, in, in Xenogears. You couldn't say the sage's oh, name. Oh, dear. Mel- Melchior? Yes, Melchior. The sage Melchior made this sword to destroy the Mammon machine. Do you remember what the Mammon machine was? Yeah, it's a machine that produces woolly mammoth fur. No, it was a, it was a machine built by the Queen of Zeal to harness the power of Lavos in 12,000 BC. That's not going to work. So during the events of the activation of the mammoth machine, it was revealed that the ruby knife, which is an item that Melchior gave Chrono and friends, is indeed the Masamune in a possibly incomplete form. Once it was plunged into the head of the machine as the ruby knife, the resulting, I don't know, concentration of energy transformed the knife into the legendary Masamune. This never made any fucking sense to me when I was a kid when I witnessed the Chrono Trigger because it was weird because they just threw a giant knife up at the machine and then all of a sudden it turned into the Masamune. You ever put a knife in a machine, Chris? But plot callbacks, I guess, is what they need to do here. Possibly to revive the blade, it was infused after this point with the spirits of Masa and Mune. Those are two little demon spirit guys that were... Like, eh, you know, you know, like it's the manifestation of the blacksmith spirit that were infused in this thing. Is that, is that why it was called that? Like if they were named the Jerry and Carl, would you call it the Jerry Carl sword? <laughs> yes, actually. And in the Japanese version, it is Grand and Leon. So mm. it kind of works out like that way. So these two little fellers later protected the sword in the uh, Dinodoro Mountains, which is where you have to go and get it. Uh, this whole like blacksmith spirit lore stuff manifesting in the form of Masa and Mune was, is pretty cool. But they were simply the hardy blacksmith spirits that manifested when Melchior was crafting the sword way back in 12,000 BC. Strangely enough, Magus has a flashback to the Mammoth Machine's destruction moment, but it was the flashback before Chrono and friends were present, because he was not, because when he was a child, they weren't present. Hmm. During this thing, neither the Masamune nor the Ruby Knife or any other blade appear in this sequence. This means that maybe Melchior was not exiled from Zeal in this timeline before Chrono and company intervened, and thus he had enough time to complete the blade to its mature form, which is why it exists existed in the base timeline, you could say. So as far as we can tell, Eric, mm-hmm. the sword was dormant until the Middle Ages, 600 AD, when two star-crossed lovers, Cyrus and Glenn, sought the hero's badge and the Masamune. Shout out to Michael P. Williams, who wrote the Boss Fight books, book on Chrono Trigger, who wonders aloud if Cyrus and Frog are lovers and the subtext is totally there. So shout out to Frog. Cool. Squall is dead. Yes. <laughs> um, so Cyrus and Glenn sought the hero's badge and the Masamune to defeat Magus. But however, after they obtained it, Cyrus was killed by Magus and Glenn was transformed into a frogman, a frogman by Ozzy. And you forgive Magus of these sins. Yes, of course. No. Well, I mean, he, uh, he's very Machiavellian, which I also I can't forgive, but whatever. So, He's got good powers, Eric. 
Yeah, so, so did Tupac. So anyway, uh, Frog retains the hilt of the Masa Mune in his little frog layer, and the other half is guarded by the twin spirits Masa and Mune atop the Dindoro Mountains, which we previously discussed. After, like during the game, after recovering both parts, Chrono and Pals take the sword to Melchior in Medina for repairs. Funky cold Medina. Yes, they find out about that because his name is engraved on the hilt. That's how they figured out that he was the blacksmith. Melchior, though, informs the party that the aforementioned Dreamstone is needed to reforge the sword. So, of course, they've got a fucking time machine or time gates. I'm not sure what's, what's the case. And they go back into ancient times and acquire the Dreamstone. Frog then uses the sword to open the magic cave and c- confront Magus. Then, this is where it gets kind of interesting if you kind of stopped at Chrono Trigger. The Masa Mune apparently went missing during the war between Guardia and Por. This was the result of Dalton's actions. Dalton was a general of zeal who was lost in a time portal after Chrono and Pals beat his ass. Oh, I hate that. We learn this through the DS version of Chrono Trigger, that Dalton was lost in the dimensional vortex, which I think is the same thing of the place that we've been in this game. Uh, during the added content that leads you to all these optional bosses, uh, the party can face off with, with a, a boss named Once King Dalton. Upon defeating him, he says, quote, I'll raise the greatest army the world has ever seen in poor and use it to wipe your pitiful little kingdom off the map. So that is what led to the imperialism of poor, apparently. Cool. This is a reference to the fall of Guardia. Now, I think this movie is only in the PlayStation version of Chrono Trigger, the bad version, but there is a epilogue in there called The Fall of Guardia. In the year 1005 AD, which is five years after Chrono returned to the, to the present when the game was over, Based on the aforementioned quote from the DS version of the game, Dalton led the assault after being transported to the 180 era from the Dimensional Vortex. During this battle, the Masa Mune was acquired by someone who appears to have murdered lots of people. (laughs) This is very apparent. There's like blood rolling down it. The war leading to the fall of Guardia is, of course, where Radius and his pal Garai used to, quote, tear it up on the battlefield, Mm -hmm. as we learned in Hermit's Hideaway way back, and made a name for themselves. So that... That war is where the dragoons kind of manifested as a, as a legitimate force and power. It is not known, however, how the sword made its way to El Nido or if the sword remained somewhere in the Zedan mainland before the events in Chrono Cross. And that's the end of the history of Masa Mune. Were you paying attention? I'm sorry, what? Eric, I now have a Masa Mune quiz. The Masa Mune is... A sword that lives across multiple generations of video games has appeared in a lot of different places because it is named after a famous 13th century Japanese swordsmith. I am going to tell you a series of video games. Yes. You will tell me if the Masamune appeared in this series of video games. Are these limited to the Square Enix faction or all video games? all video games. Is one police quest? No. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to the list. I have 20 series lists, and some of these have the Masa Mune in them, some of, some of them don't. Okay. 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 Number one, Soul Calibur. Of course. Yes, that's correct. Really? Who yes. wields it? Uh, Mitsurugi. It's something that you can get from Mitsurugi. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's like an unlockable item in a little quest mode or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, Castlevania. No, there's no swords in Castlevania. Buzzer noise. The Masa Mune appears in Dawn of Sorrow in Harmony of Despair. Word of Word. Rondo of Blood. Dawn of, Dawn of Sorrow is the DS one, and Harmony of Despair is the dumbass multiplayer one that was on Xbox Live Arcade. You can tell Dawn of Sorrow is DS because it's DS. Oh, yeah. Pretty good game. Uh, number three, Ninja Gaiden. Yes. No. Buzzer. None of them? No. Fake net, research that, please. Initializing fake net. Apparently, Ninja Gaiden Black features an elderly blacksmith named Muramasa who was trained by another blacksmith named Masamune. But, no, there was no Masamune sword. Interestingly enough, Masoto Kato worked on Ninja Gaiden 2, came back to write Ninja Gaiden... Worked on Ninja Gaiden 2 NES, came back to work on Ninja Gaiden 3 Xbox or whatever it was on. It was PS3. He worked on that? Yeah, he That was, was like after it... Uh, that guy left Team Ninja. Yeah. One of his first credits is Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos, which cool. is not the Masamune, so you're wrong. Sorry, buzzer noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four, Tenchu Stealth Assassins. Oh, of course. Nope. Number five, Final Fantasy. No, yes, of course. Yes. Come on. Uh, originally, this game was going to be which Final Fantasies, but it's in all of them. Like, really? It, it's even like in 14 and like, all, yes, pretty much everything. Even like some of the mobile ones. Air like, Guys. It is in Air Guys. I don't think I put Air Guys in the list. 
No, it is. I mean, Eric- except for all these. I know. was going to put Air Guys on the list, but I didn't. Okay, number uh, number six, the Mana series. No, of course not. That'd be too weird if it was another Square game. Nope, it's in there. Have I gotten one right? Yeah, you got Soul Calibur right. Yes, it's in both Final Fantasy Adventure, aka Second Insetsu One, and it's also in Secret of Mana. I think it's just a version of the upgraded Mana Sword uh, as you, as you upgrade it across the way. Number seven, Rocket League. That sounds too. St- no, there's no sword. It, you have cars. That's correct, Eric. There is no Masamune sword in Rocket League. However, there's a car called Masamune. So you got it right, though. This is this is sword specifically. So you got it right. Good job. You attempted to trick me. Yes. Number eight, Mega Man. No. Ding. Good job. And number nine, Puzzle and Dragons. Yes, of course. It has to be. Yes. Gotta be. Yes, it does. It does appear in there. Uh, number 10, Clash of Clans. Yeah, I can see that. Nope. Sorry. It's not. Number 11, Highlight. Virtual Highlight for Saturn? No, Highlight, the original arcade one that was on, like, uh, in Japan. Oh, hell no. No, it's not. You're right. It's not in there. Number 12, Bravely Default. That game apes Final Fantasy whenever it can, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Or that game would have something called, like, Munamass. So are you saying yes or no? What do you think? <laughs> you tell me. I'm, I'm going to say you're saying yes, and you are correct. Okay, cool. Good job. Number 13, Bushido Blade. Yeah, of course. Nope. Sorry. Uh, number 14, Dark Souls. <laughs> no. Correct. Number 15, Kingdom Hearts. That sounds stupid enough, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, because Sephiroth's in Kingdom Hearts. Right, but well... I, I, so it's in there. Yeah, I'm going to say, but th- that's the power of the Keyblade. Yes, I, I think you can turn the key... You, you can use some sort of Masamune stuff to... I, I fucking I don't know about Kingdom Hearts. Shit. Lance Bass. Yes. Number 16, Fatal Labyrinth. For Genesis? Yeah. That's a weird pull, Chris. So weird that I'm going to go ahead and say it has to be in there. That's correct, according to the Giant Bomb Wiki. That was one of the first Rogue Light RPGs. Yeah, I played it, actually. My neighbor had it, and I played a little bit of it. That's weird. Yeah. Are you serious? I thought that was like a Sega channel only. Maybe it wasn't. I saw that in the in the entry when I was researching this, and so I clicked it, and it did get a physical release later on. Okay. But it was it was one of those one of those ones that was distributed on your fucking 288 BODS modem. It was whatever. less than that. It yeah. was like 14.4. Number 17, Way of the Samurai. The PS2 Sega? Give me context here. No, that's Blood Will Tell. Um, uh, it, it's the kind of the open world kind of clockwork kind of game where you've got multiple endings and you can make a lot of decisions. Kind of. Oh, Clockwork Night. No, it's yeah. not in there. Uh, is it in Way of Samurai? No, of course not. You, that's correct. It's not in there. Number 18, Scribble Knots. Gotta be. Yeah, it is. Good job. Uh, number 19, Near Automata. I don't think so. Correct, Eric. It is not in there, but there is an NPC named Masamune who will forge weapons for you. Oh, well, I, it, it's a little rough. So, it's got to be a sword. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a sword. sword. So you, you're right. You're correct. Yeah. yeah. Number 20, and this is the final one, Sengoku Basara. Isn't that the Dynasty Warriors Samurai game? Yeah, the Capcom one. Oh. Yes. Yes, it's in there. It's not, but there's a character named Date Masamune, so congrats Damn. for getting that one wrong. So, Damn. Well, thank you for the game, Chris. Great job. I, I hope everybody uh, in, in enjoyed that. So um, that was fun for me to figure all that out. Ding buzzer. Take a time machine back to before the world went to hell, around the year 2000. The 80s and 90s were so rad. The movies, the music, the TV, the games, that's what I want to talk about. If you're cool enough, join us and listen to Less Than 2000, because that's all we talk about. Adam and Chad live Less Than 2000. Hey, that promo you just heard, Less Than 2000, go subscribe to Less Than 2000, because Eric and I are on an upcoming episode of Less Than 2000, talking about... Transformers the movie 1986. Go subscribe to Less Than 2000 and hear our appearance on March 18th. Thanks. With a purposeful grimace and a terrible smile, join Nikki and Wyatt as we stomp our way through the history of Toho's Dai Kaiju films in Discuss All Monsters. Are you telling me we're going to discuss all monsters? We won't stop until there isn't a monster left to discuss. Smash that play button like Godzilla and King Kong smash an 18th century Japanese pagoda. Only on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Okay, Eric, you ready to go to Hermit's Hideaway? What you, oh, right, Chrono Cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we get to Hernan's Hideaway. It's the idle noise of birds chirping. As soon as we walk in, Radius greets us to say, we took long enough and he's been waiting here forever. Mm-hmm. My dude, you're in my party. <laughs> he approaches, spits some periods, then tells us Dario's father, Garai, and Radius used to frequent this island for their training. Chris, what do we get next? A flashback. That's right. Still old as shit Radius is dueling against a massive knight in steel armor. Yeah, I wrote Radius is still old as fuck and Garai is from Warhammer with dual swords. <laughs> yes. He's got space marine he's dude. He's got huge shoulder pads and just 
Like, they definitely wanted to render Garai for the boss fight and just decided, oh, well, fuck it, let's just keep him looking like this. And well, I mean, when you flash back to yourself with old memories and you, for some reason, see yourself in third person, you don't see yourself as younger you. You insert present you in there. So perhaps that's what my boy Radius is doing right Yeah, I now. guess so. So they're battling. Garai gets a good shot in, knocking Radius to the floor. Yeah. He then puts a sword at Radius's throat. Yes. He calls Radius a half step too slow and turns his wrist when he slows down. Mm-hmm. Radius is like, yeah, well, you're the only one who knows that shit since we always practice together. Yeah, they have a hearty laugh after that. Mm-hmm. Just bros broing out. Radius tells our party or the player that the Einlander is a legendary holy sword passed on to the most skilled swordsmen of the Acacia Dragoons. Chris, question. Yes? Did Viper not make the Acacia Dragoons? How long has this been an, an institution? Well, based on what we just talked about, the Dragoons were a big deal during the fall of Guardia, which was only 15 years ago. Okay, I mean, it so, just seems like... But maybe they, were, they would have had to have been established before that. So I'm going to say that the Dragoons have only been around for one generation. Okay. So that's two or three owners, I yeah. guess. I don't know. So that ends... Oh, no, we, the, something bold happens next. We do a flashback and a flashback. Oh, yeah. We see another flashback of Radius and Garai. And this, this map that they're on here, this is Divine Dragon Falls, which is, a, oh, it is an area that you can go to on the world map that is not labeled between the Hydra Marshes and Arnie. There's nothing there. But I'm not 100% sure if they're physically in the Divine Dragon Falls, or if they are supposed to, or if this is supposed to represent the, the mountain, the Denodoro Mountains from on the Zenon mainland where the sword originally was. Okay, weird. So I'm not 100% sure, but they are there and they are in the process of discovering the Masamune. Yeah, I put location unknown. There's a waterfall on the right. Yeah. And then Garai is in armor that looks angelic. Yeah. But you're right, they discover it. As Radius approaches, Garai tries to pull him back down to earth. Quote, leave it alone. There is something wrong about this. Mm-hmm. Radius is like, what could be wrong? This is the legendary sword. Yeah, he does not give a shit, and he picks it up anyway. He wields it, holding it high as Garai begs him not to touch it. Yeah, nothing happens here, but something no. definitely feels off. I think they let you know that, well, not only because you know the sword is, has become evil somehow, but also they linger on the scene for just like an extra an extra moment to let you know that like there's something yeah. a little bit off here. Radius waves it over his head, telling Garai there's nothing to fear. Garai concedes he may be right, but begs to leave and not hang around this eerie place. Garai walks off screen first, and what does Radius say? He goes, ah, yes. Then we're back to present, back to reality. Mm-hmm. Radius tells us that the Masamune is cursed with hate and sorrow. Both of them. Yes, of course. Anyone who lays hands on it will be overcome with negative sentiments and will be driven mad. He doesn't seem to be able to continue the story from, from this point on. I think he's mistaken, though, because this is not the default state. Of the Masamune. Like, we know that it's actually a, a good sword. Well, from his perspective, it is, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, ever since, whoever had that during the fall of Guardia, which I'm assuming is Dalton, but, I mean, they never made good on, the, on that thread. So, but. have you ever, like, wanted to confess something to someone you respect, and you're just, like, looking for a window of opportunity, and you can't find it to, like, where to blurt out this thing about how to <laughs> yeah. say Because Radius does that. He begins yeah. to confess something, then says, that's enough talk for now, and just wait here for a moment. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I gotta go inside for a minute. He goes to his treehouse. Draggy is walking around like nothing weird is happening. <laughs> I still don't have Draggy yet. I need to get him soon. I run around. Yes, get him as soon as you can before you go to the nether. Mm-hmm. I run around and do Half-Life 2 shit while Radius is gone, and the game mm-hmm. makes the player wait in real time. Yeah. Radius then comes back out and says something about a mirror that will allow them to make it to the inner parts of the Isle of the Damned. Yes. It's, it's called- Garai's keepsake. Yeah, the Garai keepsake. Sure, this thing has got magic powers. Of course mm-hmm. it does. So that's it there, right? Yep. We then have to go to the Isle of the Damned. Isle of the Damned place. This place looks similarly macabre, but now there seems to be audibly burning torches next to some caves. Yes. Uh, God, the crunching. The crunching. The oh, bone the crunching. crunching. Those. I don't like that. It's so good. I didn't notice the tar pits here the first time we came here in, in, in the other world. It was different. It was a little bit different organized. But, yeah, but this, uh, of course, this place has earned its name very well. There's bone and viscera field next to a bunch of dragon skulls. The sky is purple and the ground remains a concerning shade of red. Mm-hmm. We get some fights. Yeah, so the first thing that you go fight is a Mm Will-O-Wisp. And I think we saw these things in Viper Manor. Yeah, they're the ceiling sentries. Yeah. And once you kill one, though, they explode and explode open a path, a door for us. If you're next to those certain paths. Yes. Well, the first one is stationary to let you, to to show you how that works. But then there's a couple more that you can lure in this first section. And you can get an earthquake or carapace. Carapace? 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 Sure, why not? Carapace. 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 
So my favorite thing about Will-O-Wisps is I love fighting four of them and then each of them doing magma burst to me. That was great. Yeah, it's great. I enjoyed that happening. Yeah. Is that the one that makes you confused for some reason? Yeah, something yeah. burns yeah. you up. You yeah. can also fight dead beats here, mm -hmm. which is interesting because we've, we fought those on the SS Invincible in Another World, but then we can also fight the dead head. So it's doing the thing where bosses are just normal encounters now. Oh, I didn't run into that. Interesting. I ran into two of them. It gave me an Inferno as a drop, which is real cool. Oh yeah, that's a good spell. And then later we also fight something called Airframe. Now Airframe, when you say that, you think, oh, it's some kind of like uh, VTOL from Terminator. Yeah. It's not. It's a tiny skeleton dragon. Yeah, it's a, a bone pterosaur is what, is what I wrote down. It's it killed cool. Starkey three times. LOL, this is one of the hardest battles of the game for me. <laughs> I wonder what, oh, because they're black elements, Starkey's yeah. white element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ruined him, wrecked him. Yes. So are we on the second screen now with the spine? Yes. Yeah, this is kind of like a Pac-Man maze. Yeah. Where you go in one door and pop out on the other side of the screen. But on that first screen, there's a body of water that just has to be absolutely filthy. Yeah, it's got to be. Disgusting. But on the left is an entire ribcage of a large dragon. And then you can go forward on the third screen. There's an airframe that will follow you around as I look at mirrors and enter bright holes. Yes. But yeah, you keep going through one end, coming out the other. How are you supposed to get through this, Chris? You're supposed to crawl under the spine and then pop out on the left-hand side of the map and then use the Garai keepsake on the westernmost mirror yes. to pop through. Uh, Arnold Cross really knows how to make the most of its assets. Yeah. I mean, these things are pretty pretty detailed. This was the, the stage in which I was like, man, I am really, really enjoying Norris's overpowered space gun. Oh, yeah. Is he wielding the gun properly? He's wielding the giant cartoon Jetson space gun and doing a lot of damage. You know how, like, it seemed like Surge slash Lynx has been doing a disproportionate amount of damage to enemies as compared to our party members for the most part because he's mm. just the strongest. Yeah. Norris is exceeding that. <laughs> he's right beating now. the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah. Norris is doing great. So this was the moment in time in which I decided to center all of my uh, forthcoming strategies around Norris's space gun because it's awesome and hilarious to me. Also, just the perspective of Norris just joining up with you, meeting a space alien, getting a gun out of a fish, and Lynx going... Oh, here you go. You take this fucking yeah, thing. Yeah. I can't there use go. this. Sure, dude. So there's something funny happened here where I couldn't get any of this mirror shit to work. And do you know what I didn't do? Uh, use the keepsake in the menu? I didn't go to Hermit's Hideaway. I didn't even have it. Oh, oops. <laughs> I was just running around here wasting time. Um, and notes about hating this, this being stupid. I can't figure it out. And then eventually, yeah, you use the mirror thing, the, the mirror on the mirror. And you can pass through the mirror and go to the fifth screen. Yes, this screen has some more things that you can you can lure Wisp to, mm -hmm. and I think I only did one of them on here. Yes, the, one the is a that reveals an inferno. Yeah. The other is armor called a white knight, yes. or wit, W-I-G-H-T. It's a white knight, yes, but with with, with no H in yeah. the in the white to imply that it's a, one of those fucking things from Lord of the Rings or whatever. That's right, of course. Yes. The guide says this thing can only be fought once per game, and I'm going to wait until I get the forget-me-not pot. Uh, that will make the encounter more worth it later. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that too, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Did you fight it? Yeah, I did. It's a creepy-eyed suit of armor with a face on its chest. Shit. It has an ability called Sadness Wave. Which oh, man, I've got that ability. Which debuffs me. And <laughs> and I beat him and I got a Golden Tiara, which is a M defense, ma magic defense uh, piece of accessory. I'll bet you look pretty in it, Chris. I do look great. I gave it to Starkey. No, I, <laughs> I don't know who I gave it Put to. Put that on your helmet, yeah. idiot. <laughs> so then the final screen. It's a giant cliff overlooking something not unlike Cape Howell. Birds are flying erratically in the background overlooking a gorgeous field of red, yellow, white, and green flowers. This no longer looks like the Isle of the Damned. Yes, I uh, also noted that this kind of looks like Serge's grave as well, just because it's a cliff with a, with yeah. a gravestone at the end. Mm -hmm. And as you approach, you see the sword, and I guess this is the real Einlanzer. On the cliff's edge is some kind of stone or marker along with the sword stabbed into the earth nearby. Lynx bends down to check the grave. It reads, in my case, Lynx Harley Starkey. Yes. May you all rest in peace. Tight. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice own there. You didn't have Radius with you. No. Did he say anything? Did he, he appear? approached. Okay. He walked out of nowhere and screams, no, Garai. Nary a day passes when I haven't looked back on that day. Radius then approaches the grave. Quote, I was overcome by the power of that sword. Chris, what's it time for? Flashback. And I said, like, the now they're of... at, like, Earth Dragon Island? Where the hell are they? Same spot as last time? I think they're in the, uh, on a different screen of Divine Dragon Falls. Okay. I think it's st still the same place. They're walking down a clay stone surface right next to the waterfall on a land bridge. Yeah. Radius is holding the sword while Garai is wondering how they found the Masamune in a place like this. Mm -hmm. As they cross the land bridge, Radius says, hey, Garai, and then slashes him as he turns around to look. Yeah, then he just laughs like an asshole. Yeah, dude. Garai drops to the ground as Radius laughs maniacally, claiming to now be the top swordsman of the Acacia Dragoons. 
So I knew that when like Garai bested him in that first flashback, we, that was going to get paid off almost instantly. Yeah, yeah. This is the evil sword take, taking hold of Radius's jealousy that he's not the top dog here. It magnifies like the slightest bit of resentment that he yes. had. Yes, of course it does. And then he laughs some more a little bit. And, and then all of a sudden the sword kind of falls out of his hands. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he stabbed himself or just dropped the sword. It seemed like the sword to me just kind of floated away, but I bet it was closer to him like gaining some semblance of a will and being able to throw it away for a moment. He then uses a custom animation to stumble around as he comes to his senses, puts his hands over his head, then forces them to his side. Oh Lord, what have I done? Uh, then falls to his knees and then puts his hands to his side and screams no in capital letters into the void. Vader no. Yes, Vader yes. no. Do not want. It then flashes back to the Isle of the Damned, and damned as that music hit hard when it starts and launches the player into the shitty wasteland. <laughs> yeah. Radius then explains to the sword that got the better of them. It tapped into his jealousy. He says, the once renowned Masamune. And of course, when I was a kid, I was like, phew, I'm glad he's saying this because they're, they're not changing the canon. He says, the once renowned Masamune, the holy sword that conquered darkness, could it merely be a tool for murder? Then. Man, most swords are tools for murder, dog. Yeah, I mean, it's a sword after all. Then the other tool for murder here, <laughs> the Ironlander, it gleams and text appears. It says, should you feel remorse for what you have done, then you may fall by my sword, you traitor. And huge ass Garai appears amongst a flurry of cherry petals. Yes, there's god rays of sun and wind blowing in the sunlight. This looks awesome. Yes, he crosses his dual swords and Radius pleads with Garai. Yeah, he holds both the swords up high in an X pattern. It's awesome. I wish we did the DX chop after that. <laughs> yes. He says that we need the Einlander to seal the cursed evil sword, but Garai, who is now suddenly a portrait character, says that then express your intent to the Einlander. Dude, this is the coolest thing I'd ever seen. As a true swordsman would do, you must defeat me to proceed. Radius replies, in order to do what is right, must one suffer pain and sorrow. One must suffer that anyway, man. Of course. Garai beckons and Brink of Death plays. Garai speaks exclusively in badass. Yeah, he does. He responds. He says, do not hesitate. Show me the pride and honor of the Acacia Dragoons. Come, Radius. Radius sits out the battle. In my case, he joined All right. the battle. I have him with me. And this is where I realized Radius doesn't have as much HP as the rest of everybody else. Yeah, that happens. So he got retired after this battle, I think. <laughs> he was retired. He was <laughs> yes. back in the stables. Garai is a white element. <laughs> uh, so thus, nice pause, Chris. I opened the... <laughs> I opened my battle with a free fall from Lynx doing 450 damage <laughs> right off the bat. That was pretty cool. Chris cut down Garai. He has a sick move, though, called Triple Cut, which yeah, does, a lot, do? does a lot of damage. Just beat you Three up. cuts to Lynx for massive damage. Yes, indeed. I noticed here that when Radius attacks Garai, he pokes him directly in the dick with his, <laughs> with his cane. I mean, what old thinks? men kind of do that anyway, right? I'm assuming also that Garai doesn't like how it feels to to lose to a space gun mm -hmm. like this is not this is this is, this is shattering he didn't his, sign up for this his honor as a swordsman it's like wait a minute what's being fuck? shot with a laser yeah, yeah. But this, this is not an easy battle i got no. I, I had to run away once because yeah. i didn't want this was before i realized that i didn't want to have radius anymore because i was about to beat him with radius dead and i had no revives left so i was like i'm gonna back out and come back and do this again he also has a move called will breaker where he oh, looks yeah. to the fucking sky to absorb light energy then strikes both his swords together to straight up murder Starkey. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Eventually, Garai killed Lynx. Starkey is dead, but then Harley, the last person standing, killed him on the next turn. Nice. Between so, life and death. Yeah, and we, you know, this is a star battle, and I didn't get those level up points for Lynx or Starkey, but I was like, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, it's fine. It'll be fine. Garai's death sequence was he kind of like dematerializes into the ether. Yeah, but he, he does it in a he does it in a, in a death pose, almost like he's celebrating. Kind yeah, of. he holds his hand up. This, like I feel like he's celebrating being, being released but like yeah as part of the terms of his damnation he had to actually try like yes. he couldn't throw the match yes so i like when the screen rotates and victory music plays and your main character is dead on the ground <laughs> yeah that's true you get the star and you get a dragoon's honor of course i stole his honor because i beat him with a space gun and hit him in the dick with a cane Lynx receives einlanser yes thank you i think radius actually got it i think radius received the einlanser oh yeah, which is interesting, too, because I don't think that you have it in your inventory. I think only Radius can... It's in my inventory. Oh, then I I'm dumb and today. wrong. Then Radius goes and speaks to the grave, and mm -hmm. he says that he has always been prepared to fall to the sword held by one of Garai's sons. Perhaps Glenn will take that role now that Dario is gone. I say, isn't, Den isn't, isn't Glenn dead here in this well, world? No, because we've been told... Like, I'm not sure, but someone said Glenn's kind of a hothead, right? Yeah, that's true. 
And there is precedent in our world for Glenn being separated from the rest of the dragoons. That's true. I don't know, to be honest. He is dead. However, I must attend to an un- some unfinished business. Please wait a little bit longer, Garai. Forgive me, my friend. And then Radius walks off screen. Yeah, peace out, dude. So then we have to head back to Death's Door. In the home world. Yes, indeed. I've made a great mistake here, actually. Yeah. I've subbed out Radius, but I've brought in Vaughn. Hmm. Because I thought maybe his boomerangs would be cool. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. All right. There's now a swirling decay of death noises. Like, it seems stronger than before. Yeah. When we got here. Mm -hmm. We approach the throbbing, pulsing mass once more. Radius emerges from behind and tells Garai they will use the holy power of the Einlander. Radius picks a sword up over his head and thrusts it with two hands downward. It pulses a shockwave into the heart of the sword. Yes. Somebody or Radius says, The sword is a reflection of one's soul. How I pity you. You've done no wrong either. Yes. Chris, can we talk about the white text on screen and what that's supposed to be? I think it's supposed to be... Is this something? Is it someone? Like, is it telling the player? Like, what is this? Initialize Chris Net. Initializing Chris Net. This is listed as Radius, so maybe he's... Oh, so I guess it is Radius speaking in white text. But wouldn't it make more sense for Garai to be saying that to Radius to forgive him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Well, I can't speculate. We don't have enough information on Garai. Fake who is it? It's your mom. He doesn't know that. It's Magus. Okay. Magus. <laughs> so then the Masamune shatters, right? Goes away. It's gone. It's not gone forever, but it's gone. The force field fades away as the sword rises into the air and evaporates. Yes. Quote, I just hope that one day the sword will be freed of enmity. Yes. The implication here is that the Masamune absorbs the essence of its wielder, which we've kind of discussed already. The enmity absorbed must be too strong for someone to override. So it goes without saying that a very, very evil person must have had this prior to radius picking it up yeah is the is the thing here i have a theory that square was going to flesh this out in another chrono game mm-hmm. they were planting seeds to be blossomed in future entries but then the square enix merger happened yeah and the big bosses said make final fantasy and dragon quest thanks bye and then, then it never happened so yeah it'd be eight years before a dragon quest game <laughs> yeah that's true but you know so then we can approach the exit of the cave and radius says the dead sea i cannot imagine what kind of spectacle lies ahead. And now we're headed to the Dead Sea in the next episode of this podcast, Eric. Great period to end, Chris. Yes. Let's consult the real net. Initializing real net. Hammer is the supplier. Vod W says Hammer is the supplier. This is true. Supplier Hammer. Yes. Asadina just says Misa Jar Jar. I think this is the proper pronunciation. Misa Jar Jar. Get it? Misa Jar Jar. Jar Jar Binks. You missed stroke? No, that's what, he, that's what he put on here, man. Vod W says, or the sword is a shell, the rainbow shell. Hmm, oh shit. Hmm, Starkey hmm. is an alien. He should know all the things, says Anamore. I don't know, man. The more I think about that, the more I think Starkey accidentally, like, you know, isn't a good representative of his species and, like, got lost. He's the biggest dumbass. Drunk. Yeah, yeah. Like, a smart alien would not have crashed here and obliterated a ship. Mm-hmm. SSD Ninja says, I feel like if Dalton wasn't a general, he'd have been the lead for an 80s cover band, which is an apt description of what Dalton looks like. Yeah, he definitely would have been in, like, a uh, Dokken. Do you know that Dalton is the only Rat. character in Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross that breaks the fourth wall? When he modifies the Epoch and puts the wings on it, I think it's playing the Epoch music, mm-hmm. and he tells the music to stop and play something more sinister, and then it changes like boss music or something. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good moment. Vod W says, wait, there was a PlayStation version. I must have bought it, but I don't remember playing it. Yes, there was a, the Final Fantasy Chronicles was the collection. It was in Chronicles of Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, and it was... It was fine, except for the load times were terrible. Yep, that's how I played the game. Yeah, it was bad. And it had special anime cutscenes when there was nothing cooler than anime cutscenes. Yeah, that's well, that, that was the reason to play it. We didn't know that that would be just put it on, is funny. on, that's on a tiny better, Nintendo system. <laughs> it's held up better than the CG that was in Final Fantasy VI, IV, and V. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's great because it's using the Toriyama designs. How, how long do you think that was? Like, total up, like a minute and 30 seconds of animation? I think it'll probably, it's probably closer to five because there's a lot for the ending. Fakenet, in the supercut that's on YouTube, how long are the Chrono Trigger anime scenes? Initializing Fakenet. LOL, it's 13 minutes and 37 seconds. 1337, leet. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you for joining us tonight, RealNet. We will see you. Uh, the outtakes are coming right up. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on November 11th, 2020. Thank you, Mark Shepard, for the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retrograde Pod. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcast. More importantly, tell a friend about the podcast. Email the show at retrogradeamnesiapodcast at gmail.com. And if you like it, or us, 
or anything to do with the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retro am. Get early access, get bonus episodes, get a mini series on the Xenogears Perfect Works or Terra Enigma. Or more. It's not an or, it's an and. And more. Get it all. Who gives a shit? Until next time. Yes, we will kill God. Now you may go back to your slumber. Who's your favorite Air Guys character? Uh, uh, Sephiroth. Ken Godhand Mishima. Oh, okay. Is it the same one? No. Ken Mishima. He was a nod to Tekken. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I, I was I was getting confused. Oh, okay. no, yeah, not that god hand. His name's Gene. Laser Orb. Uh, let's read the outtakes. No. Let's read the outtakes. Read the outtakes. God outtakes. damn it, dude. Never let's do two. It. Never do two. Hello, hello, hello. Is it on, Eric Talk? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, okay. I'm drinking my final Oktoberfest beer. Uh, which kind? Founders. Oh, yeah, Founders is good. I'm drinking a uh, New Belgium Voodoo Ranger IPA. Voodoo, those come in six packs with skeleton men on the uh, box. And I cut them out and taped them to my pantry and upset my wife. There oh. are currently six skeletons <laughs> in my kitchen. <laughs> sometimes they're wearing a backpack. Sometimes they're in the lotus position. Okay. One's a spaceman. <laughs> cool. I love voodoo. I don't understand why voodoo is like an offshoot of New Belgium, which doesn't have that many beers anymore anyway. Uh, they've got, there was like a variety IPA pack. Hell yeah. Um, that, uh, that Kyle had. And uh... Okay, so... Um, Jesus. I think my, this chair squeaky because I'm moving so much to stabilize my back. At the end of this podcast, remind me to tell you the actual worst thing I've had to tell my mother. Oh yeah. You never did tell me that. No, I didn't. I forgot. Okay. Um, are you ready for the, the next podcast? Yeah, Eric? let's do it, man. Okay. Meet me somewhere is a deep cut. <laughs> it is. No one's typing in the real net right now, so. Welcome. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany also references that weekly when she says, that looks like me, or sounds like me. <laughs> Whenever she's like, I send her a picture of her from 10 years ago, and she's like, yeah, it's me. Okay, anyway, we'll get back, yep. to, we'll get back to it later. When I played basketball, I couldn't do layups. The uh, Missed them every time. I'm just not going to respond to that. Uh, the evil lies within is the uh, was the the slogan, the tagline for a canceled, failed '80s cartoon called Inhumanoids that dealt with giant monsters under the Earth's crust in the Cold War. It was, pretty, so it was a documentary. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. How do you know about that? I watched it. I had a bunch of the toys. Like, oh, I, like I I got on it when I was a kid. Uh, when you said failed for some reason, I thought you meant it was never put into production. Like it was your, no, it, it only lasted lore. thirteen episodes. I okay. think. Music idol. I put idol of the damned. Uh, idol thumbs. Devil, devil, uh, chicken. Me. Angel and devil, Tekken 2. Angel! Devil! Good morning! Good morning.